you have a super awesome mustache, by the way. I just wanted to you know, start off with that. Growing by the day. My kids do not <laughs> like it. They would oh. not say that. <laughs> I'm a big facial hair person, so like really? it's really cool. I totally dig it. It's new. You know, I've never had one. It's new to me, and I'm just testing it out. Welcome back to my awesome interview with director Paul Dector, who is the director of the new movie uh, starring Peter Dinklage and Shirley MacLaine, American Dreamer. Paul, how excited are you that the movie's coming out soon? I am excited. You know, it's a long process to make a movie, um, you know, and this is why we make it, finally for people to see it. So really excited. It was very it was very funny. I almost spit my drink out a couple of times watching it. <laughs> so what drew you to the the scripts? Because I'm sure you, you know, read the scripts beforehand. What drew you to want to be the director for this particular film? You know, I developed it with, you know, my other producing partners. So David Ginsburg and Ted and, and Kim Kim. We heard the po a podcast on this American life, which is the basis of the story. And then we kind of developed it together. So I was kind of just attracted to this idea of what is the American dream. It's like, can anyone afford a house anymore? I think not. Like, I don't know how people today, like young kids growing up, looking at their future, like, what do you see? And it was kind of that we just wanted to take that and make a film, but in a funny way. You know, it's a comedy, but that's also heartfelt, dramatic too. Um, but just question, what does that mean for people today? And what makes you happy? Is it the same American dream that, you know, we all had when we were growing up? And what does it mean to mean to someone? Yeah, it it definitely had it had me laughing. And then it had me just like, all in the feels, especially with, you know, the relationship between the two main characters, Peter Dinklage's character and Shirley MacLaine's character, because you're like, he hates her so much. And then all of a sudden, they're like, best friends. <laughs> and, uh, all of a sudden, I mean, it does happen fairly quickly. Um, <laughs> he does, you know, that was our, you know, his character is not, starts out and he's not, he's got flaws, put it that way. And I think that's, you know, what Ted writes so well, it's a flawed character, but he sees like there's something in him. And that's kind of the, the kind of path he takes and it's like he's got all these eccentricities and it's flaws and but through the piece he kind of learned something through meeting astrid and really that you know that would kind of takes you through the kind of middle and second heart of the film and how does he change and what does he want that he is different than he wanted in the beginning of the film which was that house you know the house is like a character in the film some of those houses that were in there i mean they were just you, what was it like to just film in ha like ten million, hundred million dollar houses? Like, what was what was that like? I mean, were you like scared to break anything in there? <laughs> no, I mean, starting with I love houses. Like, like it sounds like you do too. Like, I love old houses, like really just old houses mm -hmm. that have history and kind of a soul to them. And um, that's what we wanted for this house too. It needed to be a house that wasn't a new house. You know, it, it was as old as as surely is, if not older. Um, but, you know, in all these houses you shoot in, you, when you go in, you, it's all your own stuff. You bring it in, you take all their furniture out and you put stuff down. So I'm sure there's always something that breaks, but you, <laughs> just the nature of making a movie, but um, they weren't delicate houses, put, put it that way. I got that. Well, I mean, considering, you know, Peter Dinklage's character, every time he went into a house, something was broken and he was bleeding all over it, you know? <laughs> no, it's true. He did bleed a lot. <laughs> he, did. he did. He fell a lot and he bled a lot. I was like, poor guy. <laughs> I mean, that was part of, you know, part of the whole things, bad things happen to him. You know, like nothing was going right for him. And that's the kind of the trajectory we wanted to take for the character where, in the beginning of the film, it's like everything goes wrong. It just goes wrong. Nothing can go right. And through him kind of meeting Astrid and things start to go, you, you saw what happened. Like he started meeting, like he met women and he ended up with, you know, all these crazy things. I, I don't know if you could say that that's right. Maybe that's that's wrong. <laughs> but um, 
you know, he ended up changing his views on what he wanted, basically, which is kind yeah. of his trajectory on the film. I loved the character growth from him being Mr. Down and Out to, all right, I'm selling every possession <laughs> so I can buy this house to be in, you know, after what happens to be in like, he's like, I don't want it anymore. But then all of a sudden he's like, I do want it. Like th this is my dream. Like, and it's, it, it gave me the sense of kind of like, I mean, how people are, you know, they're like, I have this dream here, but then something in my life shifts and now I'm, it's a completely different dream than what I thought it would be. Yeah, so. I mean, it's subtle, but for him, you know, he wanted the house. It was about having the big house, but it also a house represented belonging for him. Like he's an outsider. Mm -hmm. And for me, he never found his tribe mm -hmm. and felt like he belonged. And this house represents that to him. What, what comes to happen is he ends up keeping the house because he did find his tribe and his tribe mm -hmm. in Astrid. And he ends up finding someone who you would think he would never be friends with, but she changed him and he realizes you know, makes choices based on what he learned from her in a very subtle way. We didn't want it to be some big, magical, happy ending. Um, we wanted it to be like, you know what? He's thinking and there's hope for change. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I definitely got all of that. I was like, it's a, I was like, it's a happily ever after, but it's an open-ended happily ever after. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love that. And now I just want to know if he ever went to go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> That's right. He's thinking about it. <laughs> if you guys want to see American Dreamer, it's got an all-star cast. I mean, there's so I read the cast list and I was like, I know all of these people. <laughs> and they're all iconic people in their own way. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, one last question. What is it? What was it like to work with all of those people? I mean, even like Danny Glover for like the couple of scenes he was in, like it just, it seems like there was just like a lot of big presence on set. <laughs> there was, I'll say, I mean, they were all incredible. I will say, I wish we had more Danny Glover because I love the scenes with Danny Glover. Danny Glover's a sweetheart. He's one of the most incredible people. And those to me are the funniest scenes. Like I love the scenes with Danny Glover. He is so good. I want. I wanted more of him, and I was like, I wish there were more scenes once we were editing with Danny. Um, yeah, and I hope we see more of him in more movies because he's wonderful. Oh yeah, I love love Danny Glover. Such a huge fan of him and, and Shirley MacLaine and Peter Dinklage. You know, they're all just iconic in their own right and for completely different things. But like, they're all just you see all of them together, and you're like, this has got to be a fantastic movie. I want everyone to go see American Dreamer. If it's in a theater near you when it comes out on March 8th, go see it. If not, you can stream it on all platforms on March 8th as well. And Paul, I just want to say thank you for coming and chatting with me, even through all of my technical issues. I think we finally got it figured out. <laughs> we did. No, I appreciate you. Thank you very much.